to this kind of a view. I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, which we founded seven years ago here in Arlington, Virginia. We're at Politico World Headquarters. I was a politics and journalism major at Washington and Lee. Didn't realize that it should have been a Politico and journalism major. Uh, came west from Orange County, California. Was a member of the class of 86 and a SIGAP. Yeah. Okay. In what convention did you I'm going to ask you to do again, this time, mm -hmm. name and just your graduating okay. year yeah. and the convention. Okay. Okay. Just right. those three items. Okay. I'm Mike Allen. I was Southern Regional Chair of the 1978 mock convention, and I'm a graduate. I guess that's not right. It must be in 84, so I'll say this again. Uh, who did we nominate in 84? We were Democrats. Democrat. It would have been um, Mondale, maybe? Yes, it was Mondale. Okay. <laughs> so much for the track record. Is that right? Yeah. I don't think that's right because they weren't well, wrong the until Hill. Yes. Oh, was he the nominee? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and I was the Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Mock Convention. We correctly nominated Walter Mondale. The voters didn't really agree, and then I graduated in 1986. It was a SIGAP. Um, just now, let's go back to that mock talk. So, what are the memories that stand mm -hmm. out for you? And you can take these, yeah. you know, one, two, three, or mm -hmm. first view. Yeah. So, the mock convention is always the, one of the highlights of every student generation. The amazing thing about it, every single student on campus can be involved, and most are. You have whole fraternities filling up delegations, someone from just about every sorority and fraternity who's an officer, who's a leader of it. So back in 1984, I was the Southern Regional Chairman of the Mock Convention. We were doing the Democrats that year, and so I was supposed to figure out how Southern states were gonna go. Walter Mondale, not hugely popular in the South, uh, but wound up being the nominee. One of the most amazing memories from the 1984 Mock Convention was our speaker. We had a speaker who was a very Republican student body, still uh, pretty conservative, and yet we had a Democratic speaker who the students loved. Everybody really, really liked this speaker. Uh, they thought he was an important person, talking about important things. Amazing buzz about him despite being a Democrat, and that speaker was Joe Biden, then uh, Senator. Was that, was that you who did the tap tap? I don't know. I'll try it again. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. It was right there, Joe Biden. It was right there. Okay. All right. So. Which would definitely make it. Okay. Um, so. You can pick it up in the. Yeah. Middle. So the most, um, the most surprising and amazing moment from the 1984 mock convention was one of our speakers. The student body was pretty conservative, pretty Republican, and yet this speaker really struck a nerve with students. People thought that he was someone that could appeal to young people, a serious person, talking about serious topics. Tons of buzz, popularity about this speaker, and the speaker was Joe Biden, then a senator. Right. And I heard you talking about <clears throat> that there were, I don't think you were there for it, but there were, there were stories about when Bill Clinton was there. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that. Um, when, when you were there, did you appreciate that there was value in what you were mm -hmm. doing, or how did you experience yeah. it? What was it like? Um, so when you're in college, you're dying to try something, to actually do something. And the great part about the mock convention was you had the opportunity to interact with people who were the best at what they do. You had an excuse to call up top people on presidential campaigns. You had the national media coming in to cover it. And so it wound up being one of the most memorable, most exciting moments of my four years. And you can see I'm wearing my mock convention tie right here. Um, I don't know how much you know about these things. So there, there were times in the convention's history when things changed. Um, uh, Roger Mudd described it as having been a frat party, like at maybe the first half of the 20th century, and then it changed. Do you, mm. do you know yeah. about that? Can you speak yeah. about that? Um, 
So one of the amazing things about the mock convention is the chance to do something real yourself and interact with people who are the best at what they do. So we were doing what actual uh, politicians that the campaigns were doing. We had a chance to connect with people who worked on the presidential campaigns, who were state officials in their offices. And then when mock convention came, for someone who was a journalism student, it was so exciting to have the national media coming to WNL. I remember Jeff Shapiro from UPI was there, all these real reporters. That was as exciting to us as the politics. And, um, but about this shift, do, are you? I don't know anything about shift. Okay. Um, how about technology? The impact of technology has come in recent years. I know you were there as an advisor. Did any of that come into what you were dealing with? Yeah. Um, uh, so, an amazing thing about the different generations of MotCon leaders has been you've seen the. Oh, let me say, say it slightly differently. Um, ever since. Uh, Ever since the old, old days of 1984, when I was working on the mock convention, it's been exciting to get to know each generation of mock con leaders and see them embrace coming technology so that social media became an important part of the mock convention. We didn't even have facts back then. Um, before I forget, Roger made a reference that it would be great if you sort of have anything similar. Very general, very, very mm -hmm. general. But I, I did hear you say something about the two big events at Washington and Lee being the fancy dress ball mm -hmm. and mock convention. You can just make a reference to that. Yeah, it sure. gives us a tie in the Yeah, sure. Ball. So the most famous Washington Lee event, uh, Washington Lee's most famous event, fancy dress ball, comes four times in a student generation. Mock convention comes but once. And so that's what's so exciting about it. You have officers who work on it years and years. And then when the day comes, almost every single student on campus involved. Oh, uh, that thing made a noise, so I'll just say it again. Um, Washington Lee's most famous event, the fancy dress ball, comes four times in every student generation. Mock con comes but once when you're at WNL. And so it's so exciting to see officers work on it for years and years. And then when the day finally came, every single sorority, every single fraternity, service organizations, every team, virtually everyone on campus involved in some way, many of them filling out a delegation. Great, thank you. Um, so can you talk a bit about the impact on your career? You know, when you came yeah. in, were you already a Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. So. A lot of what you do in college is studying, dreaming, theorizing. The great part about mock convention was whether you're interested in journalism, whether you're interested in politics, whether you're interested in events, whether you're interested in management, the fundraising side, leadership, all these are a chance to do something real and then see the event and have all your friends come and have the media cover. So it's almost like a first job, a chance to experience the real world, but to be in Lexington. And for you personally? Um, I think what I can say about that. Um, so much, uh, much of what you do in college is theorizing, dreaming, imagining. For me, the mock convention was a chance to actually do things. Uh, I don't know. Sorry about that thing. Um, so in college, um, in co uh, in college, you do a lot of dreaming, imagining, theorizing. For me, the great part about mock convention was being able to do what I was actually dream of doing. I was a politics and journalism major. I'm now a political journalist. And the mock convention was a chance to bring those together. We covered it at the Ring Tum Phi. I was Southern Regional Chairman, got to work with the states. And as it came to the day, people in the real political world were interested to see what Washington Lee was going to do. And real reporters, Jeff Shapiro from UPI, other names that I've been reading, came to campus and were covering us. Um, we, let's look at times then that, that you've been back since. So there was 08 when you were an advisor. Why were you there? Yeah, what, okay. what did All it right. feel like? All right. um, uh, it's been an honor. <clears throat> It's been an honor and fun to get to know each generation of student leaders as they put on their mock con 
And at the last mock convention, I went back and had the honor to moderate Ann Coulter and James Carville. It is the easiest moderating job in the world. These are two people who like to talk. You didn't even have to say anything. You were like an air freight traffic control. You would just point and let them let them talk. I, I'm gonna do that. So I, I'm gonna do that one more time. <clears throat> it's been an honor to get to know each generation of mock con leaders as they work toward their event. And at the last mock convention, I was honored to be the moderator for an event. What's what's the gym? Is it? Do, do you know how you say the name of the gym? It's Doremus Gym, but I don't know. That's, yeah, that was where the event was. Doremus. Doremus was in Dor Gym, yeah. yeah. Or no, what's the theater? It might have been in the theater. Do you know what that no, is? No, no, we were in the gym. I, I, for I, Coulter and... I, I have a DVD of it for you. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. I guess but, he's an authority then. But, yeah. Okay. Um, All right, so I just... I just <coughs> but, that. But you can say the gym because everybody knows the gym. Yeah. Um, no, but alumni would like to hear the name. Is that, do you, do you know that's how you say it, Doremus? Do you know? Doremus is correct, but I'm, okay. thinking, I'm thinking that maybe the old gym is called Doremus gym. Okay, I'll just say the gym then. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the risk of saying Okay, Doremus. that's fine. Um, so it's been fun to get to know each generation of student leaders as they put on their mock con, uh, oh, I'll say that if I'm. So I always make sure to get to Lexington a couple times every year, stop into the Palms and make sure I haven't been banned again. And as part of that, I've gotten to know each generation of student leaders as they work toward their mock con. At the last mock convention, when I picked up this tie, I had the honor to moderate one of the events in the gym. The speakers were Ann Coulter and James Carville, two people who like to talk. It was the easiest moderating job in the world. It was like being an air traffic controller. You just pointed? And they talked. Um, have you been involved in enrolling speakers? Yeah, no. no. Okay. Um, <laughs> in this area, then, talking to alumni about mm -hmm. it, what else that I haven't asked you about? Anything yeah, no, we, we've covered okay. it. Yeah. So now we can move to enrolling future speakers. Mm -hmm. And we'd like you to do all of this to camera. All of it to camera, please. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, this is totally different video. Yeah, I got so it. Start it up. Yes. Uh, your relationship to Mach to uh, W. Allen Mach. Yeah. Do I say who I am or not? Yes, okay. I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and I got my first real taste of politics as Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Washington and Lee Mock Convention. We nominated Walter Mondale. The voters didn't agree, but we got the nomination right. And there was so much excitement in being able to do something real, to have the chance to connect with presidential campaigns, with reporters, and for people who came to campus, it was a chance to once again get the excitement of people who were new to this and people who were gonna be the next generation. As I go back, I always think that the, the students say, uh, it was fine the way it was, yeah, it was fine. Uh, I'll just, I'll say it one more time. I, I think that was fine, but. Um, um, I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and the first real political experience I had was Southern Region, uh, <clears throat> I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and my first real political, uh, <clears throat> I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico. I was a po uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and one of my first real political experiences was a Southern Regional Chairman, a California boy, who was the Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Mock Convention. We nominated Walter Mondale. The voters didn't agree, but we got the pick right. And it was so excited to be involved in something with so much history. We wanted to be right. Uh, we spent months and months connecting with local elected officials, pundits. Uh, uh, um, okay, you can pick it up that we spent months if you like. Yeah, okay. Um, we spent months connecting with the presidential campaigns. Uh, we spent months connecting with the presidential campaigns, both nationally and in the states, talking to local state chairmen, talking to families at Washington Lee who were from there, talking to national political reporters, trying to get a sense of what was going to happen. We felt the burden and the excitement of keeping up the great history that Washington Lee has had of correct 
predictions. And then when game time came, when it was time for the mock convention, so exciting to uh, actually experience what you would at a national convention and have the national media and some national political folks come to us. Now you're speaking to a potential speaker who's been asked to consider coming. Mm -hmm. Can you say something to them about why they ought to do it? Yeah. Um, I'm just. I'm going to do that just one more time. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House. <clears throat> I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and one of the first real political experiences I had was as a California boy being picked as the Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Washington Lee Mock Convention. We spent months connecting with the campaigns, connecting with officials back in the states, wanting to make the call right. And then when the time came, we got to do something right, not just all the theorizing and speculating that you usually get in school. We did what they did at the real convention and we had national political figures, including Joe Biden uh, and po reporter. Uh, say that differently. <clears throat> I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and one of the first political experiences I had. <clears throat> I'm Mike Allen, Chief White House Correspondent of Politico, and one of the first real political experiences I had was as a California boy who was picked as the Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Washington Lee Mock Convention. We picked uh, Walter Mondale as the nominee. The voters didn't agree, but we were right about what the Democratic Party was going to do. And we felt so much excitement and burden to keep up Washington Lee's great track record of accuracy. We spent months talking to people back in the states, talking to people at the national campaigns to get a sense of where things were headed. And then when it came time for mock convention, we had national reporters come and national political figures, including one Joe Biden. All right, and then what was it that you just asked me? I was saying um, you're now speaking to somebody who's Oh, yeah, that's right. Excited. Okay. Um, uh, I had fun. Speaking to the Washington League mock convention is, uh, let's see, um, I'm just going to say, uh, uh, who's the guy, who's the general, uh, his name starts with a W, who spoke outside Lee Chapel and his phone went off, um, uh, Wesley Clark, yeah, that's right. Um, <clears throat> speaking to Washington Lee's mock convention is so much fun, even if you're not Wesley Clark, who had his cell phone go off in the middle of his talk, it's so great to drop in to this amazing place in the Shenandoah Valley and have all these students who've spent months trying to be part of the, oh, let's say it slightly differently. <clears throat> That's great. Love what you're going. Okay, all right. Um, speaking to the Washington Lee Mock Convention is so much fun, even if you're not Wesley Clark, who, uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Speaking to the Washington Lee Mock Convention is so much fun with amazing moments like General Wesley Clark having his cell phone go off when he was speaking in front of Lee Chapel. When you're a speaker for Mock Con, as the students call it, you're dropped into this amazing place in the Shenandoah Valley and get to spend the evening with students who've spent months learning about the politics of our country and people who one day may be our boss. And can you say something about know the effect that you can have on these students yeah and the effect you may be having on the future political process yeah um, so uh, speaking to mock convention you get dropped into this amazing place in the Shenandoah Valley where there are hundreds of students who've been working for months to learn about the real mechanics of politics and then you get to shape them just as they're shaping oh, let's, let me say it slightly different. Um, <clears throat> um, speaking to <clears throat> Speaking to mock convention is always so much fun, even if you don't have quite the excitement of General Wesley Clark, who had his cell phone go off in his breast pocket while he was speaking in front 
of Lee Chapel. When you're a Washington Lee Mock Convention speaker, you're dropped in to this amazing place in the Shenandoah Valley where you meet hundreds of students who've been working for months to work, learn how politics really... Uh, um, <laughs> being a speaker... <laughs> Being a speaker for the Washington Lee Mock Convention is such an experience, even if it isn't quite as exciting as General Wesley Clark, who had his cell phone go off in his breast pocket while he was speaking in front of Lee Chapel. Mock Convention speakers are dropped off in this amazing, uh, so I'll, I'll just start there. You can pick it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll start there, yeah. When you're a mock convention speaker, you're dropped into this amazing place in the middle of the Shenandoah Valley where students have been spent, uh, <clears throat> When you're a mock convention speaker, you're dropped into this fascinating place in the Shenandoah Valley where students have been spending months to learn how real politics works. One of the most amazing adventures in our national life, which is how we pick a president. They learn how it's done and try to forecast what's happening. Talking to them is a chance to shape the immediate generation, the politicos of the future, and to learn from them. I always figure one of them may be my boss. Our speakers for the, uh, I'll just, I'll say this is a separate thought. Um, <laughs> when I was at Washington and Lee, I was a California boy who was picked to be the Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Mock Convention. We nominated Walter Mondale, but we saw there, uh, <clears throat> When I was at Washington and Lee, I saw the amazing impact that a specific speaker can have on a whole generation of students. Back in 1984, I was a California boy who was picked to be the re Southern... Re uh, um. When I was... Uh, <clears throat> When I was at Washington and Lee, I saw the amazing impact that a single speaker can have on a whole student generation. I was a California boy who was picked to be the Southern Regional Chairman of the 1984 Mock Convention, and we had a speaker who electrified the students. It's a pretty Republican, conservative student body, but they loved this speaker. Uh, it really gave them into the window. Of, uh, I, I can say it different. Um, I'll just I'll pick it up and say, um, um, when I was at Washington and Lee, I saw the impact that, uh, <clears throat> when I was a student at Washington and Lee, I saw the amazing impact that a speaker can have on a whole generation of students. Uh, this was back in 1984. I was a California boy who'd been picked to be the Southern Regional Chairman of the Mock Convention. And we had a speaker came in who really gave students a sense of what the world was like, who electrified them, made them realize what a leader can do and what... Uh, and you can pick it up, it made them realize. We're okay. okay with two cameras on it. Okay. Um, um, we had a speaker come in who few of the students knew, but who electrified them, fascinated them, gave them a sense of what's possible in the world. Everyone was buzzing about this speaker whose name was Joe Biden. And I was just going to say the end, just try the end differently. Um, this is a speaker that not a lot of the students knew, but who really opened their eyes to what was possible in the world, the route to success in politics, what a difference you can make in public life. And that speaker was Joe Biden.